I guess um, the spark came really from Andre, you know, because uh, when I learned that he he lives in Sweden, I was thinking that's very close, you know, and I always loved his vocals so much, and I, I think he's a great great frontman, so. Um, that was really the, the, the thing that, that started it for me. And um, I had been having a lot of difficulties with uh, Revolution Renaissance in, in the way that nobody really, well, not nobody, but, well, basically nobody cared about the band. It was really difficult to, to get anything done. Uh, so, also, what I did was I listened to my whole discography, you know, since uh, Fright Night. I had to lend the CDs because I don't have any of my own. <laughs> so, um, I listened to everything I've ever done, you know, solo records, Stratovars, everything. And I felt... Um, like being 44, that I still have something to say and, and uh, I felt that um, I need to crystallize who I really am. And that maybe uh, in the last couple of years after I left, left Stratovars, um, I went on a path which I needed to take, but which was very much away from who I really am, you know, and and that's when I started thinking about with Andre what we could do actually together. And he came to Finland to my home for a week in the summer, and I took the Brazilian to sauna and I showed him what what, what means hot, really. And I mean, we get get along really well. We really respect each other others and um, there is this mutual respect chemistry chemistry really I mean it was very evident he gave me a call when when um, he was playing in Finnish, Finnish metal expo a couple of years back and, and uh, last year actually. it was last year okay and um, uh, but we didn't meet at that time we just talked on the phone and it was like wow it's, it's been a long time so it's something in there that I still want to say, you know. For sure, I think it's going to be my, my last metal band, you know, because I, I really don't see myself. I just don't. Okay, I've, say, I've said this before. I've said seven, eight years ago, I will never, no, I won't wear leather pants after I'm 40. Now we've been doing these photo sessions for two days, like everybody's like really tired and I wore leather trousers, so I guess I shouldn't say these things. Well, after Andre, you know, the next one was ja Yari, because um, he was really the one that I, I was thinking about and uh, since I knew Andre is living in Sweden, Yari is, Yari is living in um, Norway, and um, everybody thinks still uh, about the Stratovars things, that I fired him, but he actually left because of personal reasons. It was not really such a big issue that it was made to be and, um, but I hadn't seen him for like five years. And when he came to Finland to record bass for the demos, I felt really weird. I felt like there was no uh, time that had passed. It was like yesterday, you know. But that something had happened. We'd grown, you know, especially me. Yari too, and uh, we had so much fun doing these three songs, you know, everybody, so.
so uh, that gave me the uh, the confidence to go forward with this with this band and uh, 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 and um, then was the question of drummer and since I thought uh, with, with, with Revolution Renaissance I had really unknown musicians in there which was basically I wanted this you know and probably many people think that I did it because uh, I didn't want to pay them mm -hmm. but I really wanted to have a like a fresh hunger you know, which you can have from young musicians sometimes when like they are really hungry and they really want it and this is what I wanted to have and that's why that's why I, 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 I decided to do this I did not think about um, success or anything like that but of course I, I had no idea that nobody was interested and that we couldn't play live you know, when you don't play live in a metal band, you're basically dead, you know. I mean, this is a musical form where you have to play live, you know. It's, there's no way out. And three years, no, no gigs, you know. And I really tried everything, you know. I know everybody, you know. And nobody wanted to do anything. No festivals. Sonata Arctica was kind enough to offer us uh, a, a support slot. We were talking about 50,000 euros costs and the record company wasn't giving us any money. So I was, I, ha I, have, been, I have been slacked about this in the press too, that I, I didn't want to do that. This is a lie because I very much thought it's a great idea. And I was like, really, like, let's do it. But we couldn't, you know, simply because of the money. I, I, I started to think who was available and uh, who do I, do I know somebody? And I wanted to have a Finnish guy, you know. Because? because there were already two foreigners and this time I really wanted to have as many Finns as possible. But there was one key issue in choosing the band members and this time it was that they have to be known, you know, because the fact is that the industry is changing and um, the fans, the people, the promoters, the record companies want names. So, so I didn't want to go to another trip that I already did for three years and repeat that. So I, I, I was lucky, really, because it's almost like it freaked me out because with Yari it was like he left his previous band, what was it called, Sons of Satan or something, I forgot. On Tuesday, and I emailed him on Wednesday, and I didn't know about this, you know. So he was like, "I can't believe it! It's like I just left the band yesterday," and I'm like, "Fuck!" I mean, so everything went like really easy and smooth, and it has been like this with with us all the time now. And um, Mick was really. Um, I met him also, talked to him, I know him since years back of the tour in Sonata and we met always. Now that I think about it, I met him many, many times in Helsinki, like he came, we, we met on the street, maybe like five, six times, just by accident, you know, he came and we just said hi and didn't even, we didn't stop, we just said hi. And, and uh, um, he is a really technical guy, but he, he is also a very emotional guy, which was important for me as a keyboard player, that he has to be like this, whoever he is. And in this case, on the demo, he, is, he was writing some, st some stuff to the songs, actually. 
some some very fast unisono lines with a guitar. I told him, you know, we should do this because this is really cool. What I didn't know, of course, that he composed stuff that I hadn't played before because I played stuff with Jens and I know what Jens plays, but Mikko plays different scales. And I really had to like study what he plays, you know, like note by note, like what the hell is he playing? I remember this, it was like, you bastard. Well, I don't, I have never actually tried to achieve anything, you know, in music. Achievement for me is a word that doesn't belong to music. I always really honestly have just written songs and we've recorded them and put them out uh, on a record and toured. And um, of course there's been this and that and blah, 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 and you know, all kinds of crap, but you know, what remains at the end of the day uh, are the, the, the plastic, the CDs, you know, and uh, the music and the songs. And, and uh, I've done like 200 songs. And uh, for me, I see myself and my, my role in music, first of all, that I am a musician. I was born to do this, you know. I have to do this. Um, I express myself through music because I have to. And secondly, after all these years, I've understood my role, um, for the lack of a better word, as an entertainer. If you go around the world, especially in these dark times, and you give people different kinds of um, emotions and like hope, you know, you talk to people. I mean, I did uh, like a guitar seminar tour last year in, in Latin America, which was one of the best experiences of my whole musical career. I went to 17 cities in Brazil. I went to countryside, I went really deep there. I went to Amazon, I went. I talked to people, I talked to fans, you know, I heard amazing stories. Um, and I really understood what enormous power a musician can have and how you use this power if you choose to use this power in a positive way you are a servant to the people and you give energy to the people so they can um, manage their life a bit better you know I think it's more than going to movies. I think it's more because, um, especially in metal, people really look up to you sometimes as a musician. And if you turn out to be a cool guy and you talk to your fans and with your fans, you meet them after the gig and you spend some time and you show them that they are important. Uh, I have seen it myself that you can actually really um, even save lives. Yeah.